A very good evening and a nice applause indeed for Bart Reining, our performer of tonight. A very warm welcome live from the Chassé Theatre here in Breda. An evening on cancel culture. Organized by the Chassé Theatre together with Studio Zeitgeist in collaboration with Breda Photo. Why have you organized this evening and why are you joining here on the YouTube channel and are here some people present in the theater life? Um, quite special that we have some people here live in the, in the, in the theater. Um, you're using YouTube. If you log in into YouTube, you can use YouTube chats because we would like to have a conversation with you about cancel culture. Why are we organizing an, an evening on cancel culture? Well, uh, because this cube over there, here you see um, uh, the remains of the work of Erik Kessels. He was one of the artists part of Breda Photo, organized in September and October. Um, the work was uh, part uh, was on the floor of a skate park, skate park Pier 15 here in Breda. And the nature of the work got uh, quite some comments on the social media and also by an anonymous grouping called We Are not a playground. Uh, there was a petition signed by many people, uh, photographers, uh, creative artists, who were uh, demanding or asking not only for the removal of the work uh, in the skate park, but also for structural changes in Breda Photo and in the cultural field in general. Um, well, the work was removed because sponsors from the skate park were not happy with the work and with the commotion. So the skate park decided to remove the work, um, which was regretted by Breda Photo. But now we are here to discuss not only this case, but also when it comes to cancel culture at large. Because this is what this evening will be about. Um, how can we see this phenomenon, not only what happened here in Breda, but in general? What's currently happening in our culture, in our societies? Where is it coming from? Who are these new voices and what are these new voices demanding? We'll start the evening with looking broad, what's happening, and we will focus slowly more and more on the cultural scene. And also we'll have, of course, Erik Kessels and uh, uh, Fleur van Muiswinkel from um, 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 Breda Photo herself to discuss the matters um, in general and what we're discussing today. And it will end with a more general broad view from what's happening also in Belgium, in the international scene when it comes to the discussions we're currently having. My name is uh, Farid Jabarki. I will be your host for uh, tonight and uh, uh, during uh, this program where I have another performance by Bart, so also something to look forward to. Um, let's start our evening and we'll start the evening with Linda Duits. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Uh, social scientist specialized in gender and sexuality. Um, well, as mentioned, we would like to explore this theme a bit broader in, 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 uh, to begin with. So we're talking about cancel culture. It's a pretty new phenomenon or the, the name is pretty new. It's also a controversial name. How do you, how do you interpret it, this, this cancel culture phenomenon? Um, it's, it's difficult to give um, a, a definition. It appears to be a term um, that's used when there is um, large critique, um, when there are voices mobilized, mostly on the left, it appears to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other side, because this is uh, a term that really started out in this polarized climate where we are today. And then the other side responds to the critique by saying, well, this is cancel culture and it's threatening uh, our freedom of speech or it's threatening our um, freedom of academia. Um, uh, and um, in that way, it's also a way of bypassing uh, a critique mm -hmm. uh, in a sense. Um, so, um, yeah, so I see it as a judgment um, that's being made um, um, about the way that we are treating each other right now when it comes to um, debate, critique, conversations, uh, um, being unhappy uh, with certain things. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And you're, you're already saying so many things. It's mostly from, from the left, left progressive, progressive side, where, and it's framed by the opponents as cancel culture. So, yeah, so the title of the evening, we're already using the, the frame of the people who are judging about this new phenomenon. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're, if you're using that frame. Yep. Uh, uh, I will first have to see how the rest of the evening goes. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a term that you see being used in that way. So you hardly yeah. uh, see, or I've, I haven't seen that um, with activist groups that you might label uh, on the left side, where they are saying about uh, uh, culture on the right side, that something is council culture. Mm. Of course, it happens uh, uh, on both sides as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm wearing my Star Wars uh, uh, sweater. Um, when The Last Jedi uh, came out, there were a lot of groups 
um, uh, arguing that this was um, a feminist film, that it was a disaster, uh, that the franchise was being ruined, uh, there was a petition out uh, to remake the film, uh, to rewrite it. So you might also call that uh, yeah. uh, cancel culture. So it's also a call to cancel. Yeah. Um, yet it appears to be that that term uh, is reserved for left-wing um, activism. Okay. Um, but for me, what's, what's for me really interesting as a social scientist um, is to look at um, the power actions that are going on mm -hmm. um, here. So it's a term, you already said it right, it's a very recent uh, a term. It's very much tied up with social media. Um, so because of the rise of social media, everybody now has a platform, everybody now has a voice. We are no longer dependent on gatekeepers uh, like journalists no. um, to have these voices heard. So you see that people can organize themselves um, that previously had a difficult time organizing themselves. Um, and they are um, uh, critiquing, whether that be uh, a work of art uh, or a representation uh, uh, somewhere. You see a lot, if you're on social media, you see a lot, a lot of calls on Netflix where uh, you know the subtitles are either racist or sexist. Yep. Uh, and then they're calling uh, to cancel that or at least cancel the people that are uh, creating the subtitles. But, uh, let, but let, let's, let's explore this a bit. So, so what's the range of what's being called? What are the voices using now? What, what, what kind of themes are their voices being used to to raise what kind of question? That, that's, uh, or is it anything? It can be a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, so um, of course, um, representations in the media are, mm -hmm. are uh, uh, an easy target. Yep. Um, um, for instance, I mean, this was the summer of body positivity. Yep. Um, so there was a lot of critique on Linda de Mol, who appeared on the cover of her own magazine, um, uh, arguing for body positivity. And then a lot of people said, you know, that she, um, uh, lived up to the beauty ideal nonetheless, so that she wasn't allowed to use the body positivity. Um, so we see a lot of media representation, yep. um, but we also see um, it aimed at people. Um, so the very, you have the, the little emoji um, when somebody, where somebody is throwing something in a bin. Do you know the, that emoji? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's sort of used as, you know, that person or that thing oh, yeah. should be canceled. Yeah. Uh, throw it's it, a, throw kind it. of a cancel emoji. It's a cancel yeah, emoji, yeah, uh, yeah. sort of the th uh, throw, throw away, yeah. cancel your account, quit your account, these kind of things. Yeah, um, so anything uh, uh, can be a part of that. So you see that um, what usually happens is that there are some voices that connect to one another, that uh, share the same critique, and uh, via social media, their critique can become louder yeah. and they can um, amplify. They can amplify. And as I said, I think this is all about power because then the question is, do they actually have the power to cancel something? Uh, so thinking about... Um, okay, let's, let, let's, let's go a bit on that later because you're yeah, really going okay. fast. Okay. Um, as so we're saying, we see a broad range of themes being, being popping up because of these new voices, because now you have the freedom to say whatever you want, like using social media. And be heard. So and be heard, exactly. So of course we exactly. had the freedom yeah. before. Yeah. I mean, everybody could sit on their couch and disagree with something yeah. and say, you know, this should be thrown away or that person yeah, so should be thrown listening. away. Yeah. But then it's only your flatmate yeah. uh, listening in. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's the difference. But then I guess, and that you're, you're researching this, what kind of themes are dominant in this in this new in these new voices? Are there are there really specific themes? You could say yeah, we, we we respond on media and on what we see on the on the media frames. But maybe there are some themes which we see reoccurring in this so new voices. So we live uh, in a time of heightened activism, mm -hmm. which is. Also a reason uh, why I think uh, this is happening at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, so within the new feminism, certain themes are very important. Um, so a representation and then um, uh, of course, uh, uh, there's the call for intersectionality yeah. um, uh, that's going on. Black Lives Matter, of course, is a movement uh, that comes to mind here. Um, so within these kind of themes, um, associated again with the themes that are now popular on the left. Yeah. 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 Okay. And and before we go into this question of are uh, is it is it effective? Uh, are, are there things being cancelled? Because I think that's a very valid question. What kind of persons are behind this? Is the, could you say something? Is is it because the themes are so broad? But you mentioned some specific areas. Is it a is it a specific person who is using these new? Um, what, are the, what do you mean? What do you well, want is it, to, is it, is to it, drop it, names? Is it, is it a, gen <laughs> no, is it a genera generational thing? Is it a, is it a, is it a gender thing? I don't know. I mean, um, just it, 
is, I think, a generational yep. thing. So it's something that's connected to young activists. But of course, young activists also um, find allies and find like-minded people uh, uh, in elder, mm -hmm. uh, in people that are uh, older. But it is uh, something that really has to do with social media. Yeah. So it's it's social media savvy um, people. Yeah. Uh, so you see um, individuals. You also see um, people that always support each other. Uh, of course, there's cliques yeah. uh, in the same way that you would have on 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 a school um, yard. Um, and you also see that um, um, the more and more that activism grows, um, you see a kind of level of professionalization going on with activism. So mm -hmm. then it's also it becomes easier to find each other yeah. uh, the next time. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And when it comes to social media, that's a pretty broad term. Are there specific channels within social media or, or uh, which well, are ex extremely useful for this? Or is it? Yeah, so yeah. it's not it's not LinkedIn. No, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not LinkedIn. Okay. Um, where this is happening, um, of course, Twitter is is the main um, um, playground, I think, or the, the biggest extension yep. um, of the public sphere right now, mm -hmm. um, because, of course, it also has to do with this extended public sphere. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know that much about Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, Instagram yeah. uh, is also a way of mobilizing um, young people. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so and so these these are the means which are being used, the, the type of persons because this is new media, so it, it it's a bit more in their in their digital native minds. Uh, then this 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 very uh, important question you raise yourself: How effective is it? Um, in uh, is are are these new voices cancelling something? You have so, the impression. So that's that to me, of course, as a social scientist, uh, uh, that's that's the most interesting yeah. question. Uh, it's a question about power. So. Um, uh, take the example of J.K. Rowling. Um, she uh, has done some. She said some things um, that people call um, trans erasing or trans exclusionary. Yeah. Um, she had a lot of critique on uh, on on Twitter, on other social media as well. Um, she was definitely being called for to be cancelled. Yeah. Yet when her new book came out, she didn't sell a copy less, um, right? She's still very much a powerful um, person, yeah. um, and maybe it, you know, it didn't really harm her career. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, the question that you must um, ask when yep. you look at this phenomenon. Um, so also, what does it mean? Uh, the act of calling something cancel culture. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. What does that What does that do in terms um, of power? Who is allowed to speak? Who is allowed uh, to voice the critique that they have? And what kind of response are you then getting? Yeah. So we see that a lot of these people that are very active on social media do not have a lot of power um, in real life. They do not have the power to actually cancel something. No. Um, the question is also, do they, what, what, um, because most of them, they don't really use the word cancel. So that's also uh, interesting to see. What are mm. they calling for? Uh, we also have this phenomenon called call-out culture, yep. uh, what you might compare it to. So what are they Just like an for? alternative wording for cancel culture sometimes used, right? Yeah. 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 And then, um, so is it, are they calling for a boycott? Are they uh, calling for, so today there was actually an interesting incident uh, uh, on, on Dutch Twitter where people thought um, that an, a statelit, I don't know what the proper translation yeah. is for that. Working um, in the province. Yeah, yeah, that she had called to cancel Jip and Janneke, a very famous uh, Dutch children's book. Um, and it was cut, like the, it was edited, the, the, the clip was edited in mm -hmm. a way that it seemed that she was calling for that. Uh, uh, and then it turned out that uh, she was actually not. <laughs> uh, and she was, like, what she was saying was, you know, th these kind of books will eventually uh, uh, go out of the libraries because they become dated and then yep. nobody wants to read yep. them anymore. But it was a big row where people were saying, oh, she's canceling Jip and Janneke. It's book burning. It's Kulturkammer. Um, uh, um, um, so it's also something um, that you have to sometimes see in the light of this polarized climate, um, and also sort of the the opef du jour, um, the commotion of the day, yeah. um, where people um, uh, also enjoy this yeah. um, fighting. For 24, 48 hours, we're completely focused on this, and then we move to the next topic. Fighting, yeah. fighting the other side. Yeah. Okay. And because I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, uh, take away any of the criticism no, no. Uh, that people have um, with anything, but it is this sort of um, constant uh, machine uh, yeah. going on, where, because, uh, which it also should be mentioned if yeah. you look at power, where um, these social platforms um, have, uh, it's in their best interest 
that there is commotion. It's how they make money, is, right? This is how they make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it's it's quantifying um, these voices. Um, yeah, so that's, this is also something to take that's into account. That's a paradox, account. that that you have this voice, you can use this voice now to give your opinion and alter maybe structures, although you're a bit more relative on this, if it's really happening. But you're also feeding the algorithm where these Silicon Valley companies are making bucket loads of money with. Yeah, yeah interesting. So, so, yeah. So, um, so one thing before we go to some more guests, and of course you can pitch in us still when they are there. Um, What's the imp what 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 do you currently see as the impact on society? Um, so because you, because you say, well, I'm not so sure about if if something's really cancelled, but you you do see it's feeding the polarization which is already going on. Very short, uh, very short statement on what what what's the impact currently, and what do you think is going to happen in the? Um, uh, I I think. Um I don't think that the freedom of speech is being threatened at all. I think no. the fact that we are here, that that you know you organize this debate, yep. um, uh, that uh, people are talking about it, but also the attention um, that was brought to um, we are we are not a playground, yep. um, which means also attention for this issue, sure. which. Um, to me seems like the best thing that can happen to an artist's work. People get angry about your work, people are talking about your work, um, that's doing a lot of things. And mm -hmm. I don't think that that's threatening anything of our freedoms um, uh, in society. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a bit um, skeptical uh, about um, what this activism will bring us. It might not be a surprise to some viewers at home. I'm also on the left side. Um, uh, I'd like to see, you know, racism and sexism and homophobia cancelled and and gone. Yeah, but it's still there. So, um, but it's but it's still it's still there. Yeah. Um, and that has to do with um, um, also the the idea that social media gives you that you that you have a voice. Mm. So you, you can really amplify your voice, you can be really loud, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're being heard by institutions where power lies. Yeah. 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 So that's a caveat as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's invite some other guests and then they, they, they can see if, we, uh, if you want to join as well. So uh, we now go to, I would like to invite on stage Alina Lupu and Kum Klein. Send me a cancel emoji. Cancel emoji, a cancel emoji. <laughs> Maybe that's already. Uh... Please, you have dips. Yes, you're. Go ahead. Here. Le mot du jour, um, a cancel emoji. Ooh, uh, two uh, new guests to join us, and uh, as I said before, please join us for the discussion uh, online, but also here in the audience. We have a microphone ready, so during the conversation, there's absolutely room for you to. Uh, raise your voice and give some input on what we have been discussing. And again, you have to log in to YouTube. My apologies for that. But once you're logged in, you can also use the chat for any questions. And I have my little uh, tablet here and I will see your questions. So, uh, so hopefully uh, you will join us. Welcome. Um, Thank you. Um, Happy to be here. Alina, artist, writer and activist. And Koen, um, art critic of the Groene Amsterdammer and editor-in-chief in, -chief in uh, Ons Amsterdam. Yeah. Kun, shall we start with you? Uh, because now we would like to Maybe focus, first. because we've been discussing the general um, um, influence of, of, of cancel culture uh, for society, but now zoom in into the cultural and art practice. Um, what do we see there? Do we see the same uh, uh, questions uh, raised by Linda, or are there some specific... Well, I, I, Linda raised some excellent points here just yep. now. And uh, um, one thing that immediately sprang to mind was in this very same country 50 years ago, you would have the oxytomat, the tomato act, where a young actor, the action tomato, the action tomato yeah, yeah. would disturb performances in theaters and call out the actors on stage for being old fashioned and not serving the fate of the Vietnamese people and things like that. Same thing happened in the Concertgebouw, concert halls, where people actually disturb the, the concert going on. And it's odd to see that sort of the grandchildren of these people are now defending themselves against the next generation who calls out their, well, their morals, basically. Yeah. So we just see her cycle. Well, possibly, yes. Yep. And, and you're right to say, of course, that the, the medium, of course, has changed. The, so the social media yep. is infinitely yep. more powerful, but it's still a matter of, of power and mm -hmm. who controls things. And what I notice is in, in the case of this Breda issue, but also in others, that it's not so much the artist or the public that are important, but it's rather the intermediary, the institution, the museum, that is really challenged. And it's disappointing that they fold quite quickly sometimes for something that you can't really imagine. You, you should 
The Philip Guston is an interesting example. It's a show that was going to be in the Tate. Philip Guston's American artist. And in some of his paintings, you can recognize Ku Klux Klan-like figures. And everybody knows that an exhibition like this takes four years to prepare. But suddenly, somebody online says, oh, look, they're showing Ku Klux Klan images. And at that moment, the Tate folded and said, oh, we're going to yep. postpone this. And the curator was fired or rather silenced. And I think there, it would be good for people in these institutions to realize what they are actually doing yeah. and what their function really is. And when you say this is, has always been there, so you focus now on the cultural institutions, are the ones in the, in the, in the shooting zone. Um, is, that, is that different from, from earlier periods? Were the, were the same institutions being targeted or is it, is it new about? I think, I think the, the essence of it must be the same. Yeah. It is, it's just, and the, uh, you mentioned academia, where, where you know, the, the policies of, of the management are challenged by the students. It must be exactly the same as what happened in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, you might even say, on a wider sense, that this element of debate has left our public forum over the last two or three decades, but everybody being complacent, complacent. <laughs> with wealth. And this is really what it should be like. This is really what you should do. This should be, daily, but this should be on a daily basis. Even. Yes, if you, yeah? okay. and, and not to get too much into this specific case, but I noticed there's a lot of these intermediaries in the arts that put out their stuff and bravely say that they'd like art to be abrasive and confrontational. Yeah. Well, there you go. Now you've got it. <laughs> you or if you it. say, we're looking for dialogue, well, here you are. And, in, and I find that they're not really, haven't maybe thought this through. How are we going to conduct this, this dialogue? And I, well, what does it really mean? And again, I find it sometimes a bit spineless of these institutions to quickly fold and close their stuff and remove the painting instead of saying, no, this is what we decided on. This is the, what we think is important. Suffer, just okay. take it in. Okay. Alina, how are you in this, uh, in this conversation? Um, uh, I'm trying to keep track. I'm also trying to, I would like, I would love for there to be a fact checked for both of your standpoints, because I think there's much to be added to both. Yeah. But also, I'm slightly disturbed by the thing that's hanging above our heads mm -hmm. right now. Um, yeah, I don't know where to begin. Where, to where, begin. where do you would like to begin? Um, yeah, um, well, I think my biggest worry coming here was uh, not just the move from the online to the, to the live, but mm -hmm. more the idea that my presence here is a bit instrumentalized to promote an artist, which is not something that I necessarily would like to do, mm -hmm. um, because I think there are much more interesting things that need to be talked about in terms of how cancel culture is, has been framed so far, and yeah. in terms of the impact that it has, and in terms of where it actually originates from. Um, and yeah, over the past few weeks, I've been reflecting a lot on all these things, and I've also tried to be an active voice online in order to, yeah, promote several causes, not just this particular one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, so, let's, let's, shall we start with the, where it originates from? This is interesting because Linda made some comments about where she thinks this, this phenomenon comes yeah. from and, 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 and uh, social media voices being heard and being listened to. Yeah. Kuhn says, well, it has always been there. It's just for the last two decades, it, was, yes. it, was, well, it wasn't there. And now, thank God, he says, it's, it's back, perhaps. Um, yeah, I, I agree with the fact that, um, well, this is a new phenomenon in the sense that it's mainly based in the online, but mm -hmm. it has roots in protest culture in general. Yep. So uh, that's accurate. But I also think it's, it's worth mentioning that it's, it, it originates on black Twitter. So it's usually women protesting the behavior of uh, men on Twitter, which were kind of crossing the line. So mm -hmm. that's something that needs to be added to the whole, yeah etymology of cancel culture. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, I think the people protesting now, um, yeah, are the, the follow-up of the protest culture in the 60s and 70s, but they're also much more international and they're much more broad. As, a, as an illustration of that, uh, we're talking in English, and yeah. I think I might be oh, the yes. only person in this panel who <laughs> would need to talk mm -hmm. in English mm -hmm. because I'm not Dutch. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Is, is, is that, uh, Alina is making some differences with, with, with earlier protest movements. It's, it's more international, it can be it's done online. But does that make a difference in your... I, I don't know, you, you, you'd have to really go into the sociology of, of protest, but yeah. I would imagine that the, uh, the socialist international was pretty international, okay. and that uh, conflict here was immediately echoed with conflict there, yeah. and there was 
you know, in the 1930s, the dock workers in Australia were, uh, expressed their solidarity with the, the people working in Indonesia under Dutch rule. This, yeah. I guess, uh, again, the media, we're, we're perhaps a bit obsessed with these media, that mm -hmm. suddenly you, you hear all these voices. These voices were already there, and they may, maybe were channeled in a different way, and the debate may, might have been more polite or might have been more subdued. But I guess it was always there. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'd like to repeat that, that, that I always, I noticed, especially as, you know, if, if you look at art crit critique of the last years, mm -hmm. it was actually quite dull. Everybody seems to like everything. Um, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but there's a, there's a prize in the Netherlands called the Prize for Young Art Critiques, and I was on the jury of that. And there wasn't a single angry voice there. Everybody just appreciated everything. Uh, and that's odd, in a way. Yeah. So, um, and I find, especially in the Netherlands, for instance, with the way the Netherlands press uh, reported on the elections in the United States, as if something horrible was going on, and there was something horrible going on, but basically what you see is democracy in action and very strong opposite voices, and uh, we may have been a little bit too pampered or a bit too... Okay, so, so Alina, now, now this, these voices are being raised. Yeah. What do you think are, are the, the main themes, or what, 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 what should the voice be about, according to you, when it comes to the cultural and the cultural practices in the Netherlands, or... In Europe or in general? I can only observe what's yeah, happening. Sure, yeah. So I think um, there's a lot of call for, um, well, tackling racism, sexism, xenophobia, um, and mostly tackling uh, this sort of unbalanced power structure. So there's a lot of people that feel that they indeed don't have power. Some people mm -hmm. that actually are within structures of power and they still feel that they don't have power. Um, and uh, yeah, they're doing their best to speak against that mm -hmm. and to try to yeah, break down hierarchies, especially since um, the title of the event was, um, well, established structure. Justified criticism yeah. of the established order or the, established the creation order. of there new taboos. Yeah, I, I, thought, I found it quite interesting to mention the established order and also like justified criticism of the established order uh -huh. because uh, it's almost as if the established order would be a good thing. I would say that it's uh, quite an ossified structure that needs to be shaken a little bit, and um, yeah, people. Yeah, if I may touch on that, there's one thing I yeah, because I, I, like, I would like to ask the both of you what's on what's on the table, what should be, because I think you both have an opinion on on this established order and how they, it should be. Yeah, well, you first or me? Please, you wanted well, to say something. Well, yes. Well, the, one of the, one of the things of established order. Uh, which is relevant also in this case yeah. in Breda, is this the way works of art are presented to the public, especially in public space. This is in a certain way. And um, I suspect that behind this is a kind of ethic, or you might say a modernist ethic, uh, which has been around for a hundred years, that you know, it's good for you to see stuff that you perhaps don't like. You know? Or you have, an you have a nice st street with historic buildings, we're gonna put something concrete right there. And this is change, and change is good because it's change. Or it's, and in a way, this, this, this hierarchy of the way art is produced and how it's presented in public space still, still uh, doesn't sit well, you might say, with contemporary uh, viewers because they're much more vocal, they're much more used to respond to these things, and they're much more used to be listened to, and they have more media to, to do it. So your grandparents would walk by that statue that the city put up in the park and say, well, come on, we can't do it. Now, of course, you can mount any kind of response to that. And uh, so that system of how you do it as a cultural institution or as a festival, that is something that these festivals or these institutions really think about. And, and that, if you, if you want to use the term ossified, yeah. that it's oddly this kind of modern idea that is now getting yeah. out of date. Okay. Well, let's discuss later on how they're dealing with it, but... Alina, what's for you at, at stake? Um, oof. I think for me personally at stake is the way in which we make art and the way in which we uh, relate to our audience, but also to the people that help us make the work. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's at stake is realizing that we don't just make for a market and we're not just like um, after, after well, selling. I think what's at stake is it's more important to uh, look at your work with a critical eye instead of just making provocation for, I don't know, for, yeah. Is it about communication, you think? I think there's something lost in translation when you make such a big festival 
as Breda Photo, um, and you commission works on such a large scale that you kind of lose the, yeah, the direct criticism as you're making the festival. Um, I, I think it's interesting. I mean, that was part of the criticism that we are not a playground uh, brought about. It's, it's interesting that this work of Eric Kessel's, which is right now hanging in a cube above our heads ominously, um, was looked at by several pairs of eyes. It was curated into this show, but it, nobody thought, hey, maybe this is not the best idea. Maybe this is, I, I think it was just, if it, it was just meant as an pr empty provocation, okay, fine, mm -hmm. Eric, uh, and we can talk about that. But I also think it's, yeah, it's, it, it, we can do better than this. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's, it's worth to like, um, yeah, reflect a bit more before okay. unleashing this and, into and the world. Kun, is, is it a broader critique? Is it something you hear more often when it comes to Dutch art? Dutch Actually, this, I, I may be misunderstanding this, but I think there's, there's, there might be such a huge error of judgment here that you, that you have to first assess what the consequences of a certain work might be and then choose not to do that. I mean, that, that would be true always, of course. Okay, but, but who, are, who, really who is the audience? Who are, true, you, who true, are you catering to? True, especially if you put something out in, in the kind of uh, context that, that it was put out in. But still, you, you might... You might you, you might be get over hygienic if you do that. You might be beginning. To would you though? I mean, would it be fair to say that the work in question, the picture like well, pictures of women that are yeah, or people that present as women that were passing through plastic surgery, um, that were like subjected to plastic surgery and later on asked to be mutilated by skaters, would you think this is like, like the thread? If I present you this idea, do you think this is necessarily something that I'm, should I'm, be... Um... I'm, I'm, I will immediately say yes. I find this, if this artist makes this case, I would immediately say, okay, fine. Uh, but, but the uh, question, uh, how you would present it next and in, in what kind of circumstance, yes. That, exactly, but, that's that, something. but let's discuss this, because it's interesting when it comes to, you're, you're stressing the importance of audiences. So it's also I'm the question, the where do you do it? thinking through yeah. and like not promoting violence against women, but mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but so I, th I think what's yeah, interesting Linda? here, uh, it's also, I think, um, uh, it, but correct me if I'm wrong, um, who do you give the floor to? Mm -hmm. Who's, who is supposed to be on stage? Who, sh who is supposed to um, get the attention, um, regardless of the question about the work of art itself, but also is being showcased? And um, what I find very interesting is that underneath a lot of these discussion is the issue of commercialization. And also that's one of the things that's often being called for mm -hmm. is to call for a boycott or as we've seen with um, Football International in the Netherlands, um, where you know they make homophobic and transphobic jokes uh, and racist jokes uh, at the talk show table. And then activists um, do not call for um, the TV show uh, per se to be canceled, but they say to advertisers, are you sure you want to advertise here? So again, that is, it's not just a critique on the work itself, but also a critique on power structures. So on the uh, establishment mm -hmm. and that the way the establishment makes choices, um, who they give, who, yeah, who they give uh, the floor to, mm -hmm. who is allowed to make money, uh, uh, who, who is allowed to get the grant. Mm -hmm. yeah. But is that what you mean, Alina, when it comes to, are you reflective on what you're doing in what kind of context? I'm referring, I don't even like put the sponsors in question here. No. I'm just referring to, um, yeah, the artists thinking through to mm -hmm. what they're doing and mm -hmm. the curators thinking through. And I mean, I'm an artist. I tend to try to think through when I put out a work into the world. And this just, for me, I'm sorry, but feels sloppy and it feels like rushed through. And it mm -hmm. feels like, yeah, if, if, the, if your criticism has been that, and it has been extensive in several magazines, not just in like cancel culture and one group that tried to make a petition and everyone subscribing to it, is I'm, have these questions not come up during the process of curating this work? Mm -hmm. that, that is my question. Because what, what, because what kind of impact is this making, Kuhn and Alina, for, for you both, these new voices using these new media on, on artists and, and cultural institutions? Do, do, do you see a difference with, with your activism and, and is there something changing already in your impression? Well, yes, yeah? there is something changing, okay. but that's because over the past few weeks, 
incidents have been coming up from all directions. So this is just one example, mm -hmm. but there was also um, another incident, incident uh, related to another festival, mm -hmm. an online festival called Economia Festival. Yep. There was the NRC article, now infamous, that everyone knows. And um, yeah, these things are actually leading to like discussions on all, um, yeah all layers of institutions, from educational institutions to funding institutions to, yeah, well, in this case, sponsors. Mm -hmm. But I find it interesting that in the case of the Breda Photo, um, yeah, response, there was no really, like, further reflection. There was just an, a, a knee-jerk reaction to the fact that there was a petition coming up. And there was, uh, yeah, I would say, a layer of offense to the fact that the sponsors decided to retract, but <laughs> there was no actual engaging with the topic, and yeah. I don't consider this to be engaging, by the way. Yeah, okay, that's clear. And it, it, and that's, that's a different response you see from different artists or different yes. institutions because they are respond they are responding different and in in a good way that it's making it's making a change. I, I think everything is like snowballing into yeah. an actual like moment of reckoning and mm -hmm. change, okay. um, in which mm. well people are assessing their values in the art field, in the Dutch art field, but also, I would say, internationally. Okay. Because even the case of the Philip Gusten exhibition is quite interesting, for example. There, I tried to listen to, um, to an interview with uh, one of the directors of one of the museums from the States, um, and her response was that um, they had an issue of diversity in their institution, so they decided to postpone the exhibition because all the curators in their team were white assigned to this particular um, show. And they decided to think, okay, maybe we should, yeah, considering it's 2020, rethink things and reframe things and take our time. So they decided to take in potential criticism, but rather than, because this is actually, I think this is what We Are Not A Playground would like. Mm -hmm. At least this is what I gather from it. Yep. But I, again, I'm not part of them, so mm. I wouldn't know directly. Um, for this sort of reflection to happen inside the institution so that it leads to actually a more complex work at the end. Mm. So I'm sure the Gusten exhibition, when it will be out, mm. um, I will have a lot to live up to, to begin okay. with. That's an interesting question. So, so Kun, but, yeah, do, you, do you well, agree? I, I, because I, I Alina says, that they, I, I see change, I see artists, cultural institutions responding. Some, some are responding well, some are still struggling with the response. What do you see in this? Well, and then, yeah, then the uh, second uh, question would be, is it is changing art? Is getting art better because of this? But that's the second question. Let's start with... Oh, that's a tough one because... No, no later. later. Let's, okay, let's start with Alina and... Is, I, because I, I hesitate to speak for an artist. But sure. uh, yes, of course you see these changes. And uh, uh, without sounding 100 years old, you can see these, these seesaw movements going throughout history. If you look at pictures of 20-year-old men in, in the beginning of the 20th century, they all have beards. They all want to look old. And uh, that was the thing. You want to be old and wise as soon as you could. Now it's the reverse. Everybody's wearing fancy sneakers to look young. And this is, <laughs> may sound silly, but then again, I've been on committees uh, the Amsterdam Fund for the Art, for instance, where everybody was obsessed with finding the younger generation as a target audience. And I remember once allocating, I don't know, something like 15 festivals or something, cost for them, and then counting how many kids were actually having to go there and then counting how many kids there actually existed in Amsterdam. <laughs> and it meant that all these kids in school had to go Full on time. their bikes all <laughs> summer finding all these festivals. And this, so you see these obsessions that come and go, definitely. Yeah. Underneath, of course, are, as you rightly put, there's uh, a sense that uh, complexity is a feature of today. And you cannot just choose one thing. But you have to constantly incorporate all these variations within your organization, which is excessively difficult no. and maybe in some cases absurd. But uh, anyone growing up in these institutions now has to be aware of that, of yeah. course. So, yeah, so it has to be aware of it, but are they aware of it? Because Alina says, I, I see change. I, I see institutions responding. Oh, I absolutely. See... Yeah, okay. Absolutely. You and if there are any I questions, be... please, please ask them. Eh? And you can be, I can be sarcastic about this, but um, I once spoke to a, a, a comedian from Caribbean descent, and I asked how is jo stand up, basically. And said, how's, how, how's life going? He says, oh, it's easy. I'm funny and I'm black. So I can sit by the phone and just wait, because everybody of the, all these traditional institutions need me to liven up their openings or to involve me in their program. And, and again, I'm being ironic here, mm -hmm. but th there is that. There, yeah. is, there is that kind of... Can I add something? Yeah, um, I think 
um, I don't know anything about uh, art, um, but I do see that um, a lot of this debate takes place in the cultural sector. And that's also because the cultural sector is responsive um, oh, to yeah. these things, um, because they are willing to listen. And then sometimes maybe they listen um, and they, you know, they avoid any kind of discussion and they just, you know, get rid of it uh, and that's it. Or sometimes they do organize uh, conversations between activists, uh, as we've seen in Amsterdam with the school, um, uh, the, the club. The club. Yep. Um, but the, I think also the fact that it was the school um, that became uh, the target of criticism was because the school was willing to listen. Whereas, I mean, there's other clubs that are way more racist, you could say, but um, the yeah, school so was... For, was for people who don't know the school, eh, so, so the, 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 the claim was they were not inclusive enough and not exactly. uh, having entry for everybody and in the that, club. Yeah. And the reason why they were susceptible to that critique was because they find it important no. to be inclusive. And I think that makes it interesting to watch these discussions uh, going on because um, for the cultural sector, of course, they are the place to listen to these things. They are the, the place yes. where, where, where activism um, uh, should find its voice. Um, and so we're seeing uh, a lot of these instances in the cultural sector and not, for instance, um, in places where you might argue uh, it's worse. Mm. Or, or the situation yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. is worse yeah. in terms of these things that, that's, that's that people are fighting oh, you're right. for. I mean, you're, you're, you're calling out these institutions on their own values. Exactly. And uh, that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah. That's what okay. Makes it, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, to, Alina, to, yeah? to add to that, yeah. I think it's quite interesting, for example, that you have a, a new generation that's being educated and quite, yeah, well, higher values, I would say, but you still have the institutions that are educating this generation um, not really catching up to what the institution is feeding their audience. So it's, yeah, it's, this is where the clash kind of comes. You see, organizations worry, you'll, you'll be on the other side eventually also. Well, I hope not, of course. <laughs> I think you can also keep up. You don't have to, it's not about, I, I don't think it's about age. I also don't think in the case of this work, it's about like people necessarily being tied to their gender and needing to like take positions because this is also something that came up like, you know, if only more women were in power, then you know institutions will be better. Not necessarily, um, and it's if only more young people. It's not that. I think it's a matter of mentality, and it's a matter of lis in the listening to what's to the discourse that's yeah, that's happening. Hmm. Last thing, because you said that was very interesting, Alina. Um, also, the the art well it doesn't get better, maybe, but more re more, re more reflective. Could you elaborate a bit on this? Because I'm curious about Kuhn things. Do you think that by raising these voices by having the impact, what then changes in the end? Um, well, I would say that what changes and also what is one of the things that um, it should bloody well change yeah. is the art world will become more inclusive and more diverse, uh -huh. which would reflect a bit more yeah, society as a whole. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is a very yeah, diverse country, mm -hmm. but I would say the art structures don't really reflect that. Yeah. Not in terms of gender parity, <laughs> not in terms of race, not in terms of yeah, ability and disability. So I think that needs to be yeah, better translated to the people that make the works yeah. and the people that like run the structures of the art world. And yeah. it's happening, but it's happening slowly because yeah, it's too just, slow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and it, and it's, I agree. And it's, it's sometimes about very fundamental things. I remember the Biennale in Venice a few years ago with Enzo War was the curator, including a lot of uh, works of art from Africa. And, and uh, an element of the debates about that was when this isn't really modern art, this isn't really contemporary, mm. this is other stuff. Mm. Yeah. This, this, it doesn't work the same way. So the paradigm of what art was is, it, is, there even, is under debate there. Yeah. Uh, and so you get into very fundamental stuff where you would say, ah, yes, well, this is an interesting person, but what he makes isn't really art, yeah. because we know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. These what, things change, too. What, what the established order is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's end with this for, the, for this for now. Thank you so much, Linda, Kuhn, and uh, Alina. Uh, we'll go uh, back in a few minutes with our second panel, but now we have a beautiful performance again by, uh, by Bart.
Another beautiful performance by Bart Reinink. Uh, we go to the second part of our evening on cancel culture or call-out culture, what do you want to call it. Um, we have three more guests to, um, to join our here on stage. Uh, please applause for Erik Kessels, Nanja van Rijs and Fleur van Meiswinkel. Here they are. Hello. A very good evening. Hello. Hi. 
to the left, Fleur van Muiswinkel, director of the Breda uh, Festival. Here to my right, Nanja van Rijssen, co-founder of Women Skate the Worlds. And in the middle, Erik Kessels, uh, artist. And uh, already discussed you a bit uh, during this, yeah. uh, this evening. <laughs> so uh, let, let's, let's start with you. Uh, what have you been picking up in the last 45 minutes? What really struck you and what's something you, that you would like to take on during this discussion we're having? Um, yeah, like... Um I think um, most of all, uh, what I kind of regret in this case a little bit is yep. that uh, the discussion uh, about the work, about the content of the work, in a way has never happened because, um, yeah, we, um, I mean, there were several attempts uh, also before the work was removed in a way to, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, get in discussion with the people that really uh, kind of hated the work. Uh, and, yeah, that was not possible. And, um, I think that that's also something yeah, we, we uh, and I regret in a way because in the end, yeah, the, the, the discussion uh, went on through uh, cancel culture and yeah, that's where we are now yeah. in retrospective uh, after uh, all, all this has happened. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, because that's what we've been discussing up until now, where it comes from, the new media, the new voices, what, 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 the, what the program is or what they want to achieve. Is that something you were familiar with before you got cancelled, maybe? <laughs> no, I, <clears throat> I think, um, yeah, I, I, can, I can honestly say that uh, I have never uh, expected that reaction. No. And I mean, also to answer uh, Alina, I think also, um, yeah, the work uh, has been on the table for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, many eyes have looked over it, uh, festivals, uh, sponsors, uh, foundations. Uh, and also journalists, uh, interviewers, and there, there has been a lot of attention to the work before it even was there, because mm -hmm. the, the work only happened uh, yeah, at, at the very last uh, moment uh, before the festival it was opened. Yeah, sure. yeah. And, um, and, and that is something I, I was quite surprised about, that, um, yeah, that, that uh, then suddenly, I mean, I, that's something I, I did not uh, expect. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think a lot of people, uh, uh, even also of uh, Breda Photo didn't expect that, yeah. and um, um, yeah, so th that... Uh, okay, well. because now yeah, that's, that's an interesting question for you. Were you already aware of the work before, or was it when it was installed and it got the attention and then it also got your attention? Uh, I was informed about it, I think, uh, the day that the skate park posted it on Instagram. So someone sent it to me, another yeah. skater sent it to me like, hey, do you see this? What the fuck? We don't agree on this. Yeah. And that kind of spread throughout the skate scene or mm -hmm. especially throughout like the girl and queer skate scene. Yeah. Um, and then the by, by using social media, I guess. Yeah, so if you, you got at... WhatsApp as social media yeah, as well. Sure, yeah. yeah. So then it, it's you were like sharing the pictures of the of the of the work. The pictures, the yeah. link to it, uh, the comments on it, yeah. uh, also the pictures of when I think like a test edition something was posted on Instagram, mm. and there were some like slightly negative comments maybe on there as well, and people mm. were sharing that as well. So it kind of spread throughout the scene. And then it got picked up and it got amplified, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think mm -hmm. no one expected the protest to become that big. Mm -hmm. But like even on that Friday when I heard it, even that same night, it got really big already. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes fast. Yeah. And, and, and what, what, what was for you the, the importance of, of ha having an opinion on this work? What, 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 what do you want to, um, what's there on the agenda for you? So on the ag agenda, like uh, personally, I don't, I didn't like the, the work itself, but mm -hmm. it's just a matter of opinion. Sure. So what was more on the agenda for me for like protesting it is the fact that the, uh, the impact of it could be harmful towards the, uh, the children or youth and, and young girls that were in that context where it was placed yeah. mm -hmm. without um, like more information in that specific context. You could look it up on the internet, you could mm -hmm. read what the intentions were, mm -hmm. but you cannot expect of like miners to go on the internet and research what they are destroying, hmm. as it's called. Okay, hmm. interesting. Yeah, so you, very specifically the users of, of the Breda Skatebahn, Pier 15, where, where are they, what are they doing, and yeah, how and then do at they the moment it grows bigger it than yeah. also the people who see it on online, uh, on like Instagram and stuff. So yeah. what happened in, in daily life is that in the same week I was teaching young girls um, in this skateboarding and empowerment program. And those kids had seen the pictures of the artwork mm. and they know that there's a protest going on. So they felt 
more empowered, you could say, because they know that someone is standing up for their values. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's also on the yeah. online thing. As yeah. soon as they caught attention, then yeah. of course they are also seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Is that something you realize now, Eric, when it comes to no, what you are saying? I, yeah, I think uh, there is, a, in that sense, also quite a big misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think like that, that a lot of the people who have like the biggest criticism that they never have visited uh, the installation itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's the picture yeah, apart of from that, I mean, the whole intention of the work, and, and that is also a misunderstanding, I think. I mean, people might uh, hate it or might like it, but uh, the intention of it is that uh, uh, it's, it's a mirror on society and how uh, young girls, uh, people now uh, just uh, modify themselves and uh, how people uh, use cosmetic uh, um, uh, surgery mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and the work has also uh, a certain irony of course by uh, skating over it uh, there would be a natural aging the natural aging again after that happening and yeah. uh, but the, and then Nanya says that there's also an impact for the scene itself and and the queer and women community within uh, within this the scene the, the skate scene because they could feel less represented or maybe yeah, like you've got to think of it as the power structure. So we were yeah. talking about before. The it's like, fact is that the art institution is ruled by mainly middle-aged men. And I'm not in the art uh, world, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. But no. the same goes for the skateboarding in, uh, world. Like sure. Most people in power are still the white middle-aged men. Yeah. So at the moment when girls and queer and like other all the marginalized groups in skateboarding are fighting for this place on the table or like equal treatment and media representation that this has been a quite big fight over the last couple of years and now that it's finally getting better you get this artwork there and i get that the, uh, the intention was different but the impact of it felt like mm. a slap in the face mm. like destroying women's faces mm. Um, that, that was something that fell really hard with uh, the community that was just fighting against these yeah. power structures. Okay, that's clear. Do you, un do you understand that slap in the face? Yeah, but, no, yeah okay, but there, there is of course also a difference between uh, activism and uh, something political and, and, and the work of art, of course. I mean, uh, I think that uh, yeah, like an artist and a, and, a, and a work of art should also have a certain freedom and a certain uh, safe <laughs> space to uh, work in you know like uh, i think art an artist uh, should be able to express himself or herself in uh, in you know with a certain irony with a certain idea with uh, uh, a conf making a confrontation uh, people might hate it might li might like it but it, it it is also especially there to spark uh, the debate the discussion no. and yeah. of course i'm but open in a safe to space so yeah. in a museum yeah, yeah. No, so no, in a okay. place for art, <laughs> so that's, yeah, the that's, thing. that's probably also one of well, the... Well, let's, let's, let's go to Fleur, because yeah, that's, yeah. That's, I mean, not only then that immediately go to what kind of space do you need, but, but, but Fleur, is, is, were you anticipating, uh, Eric says, well, I mean, the work was already known before it was placed, and it was placed, and then the commotion got there. What, was there did you ever thought of the commotion, the response it got? Well, um, any signs? I, any? I started at Breda Photo at the 1st of April this ah, year. Yeah. And uh, new, many of the conversations the that Eric had with the organization of Breda Photo uh, was before I was uh, starting. Nevertheless, I know uh, that, as Eric also already uh, said, that there had been many conversations about the work, also with the owners of. Um, Pier 15, the people who uh, these uitbaten. Yep. Um, and um, I think what we uh, never could have foreseen is indeed the impact that the work would have as soon as it got captured mm. and shared over social media. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, working in the art field already for uh, now, I think 16 years now, this was the first time that a work of art that I was directly confronted with uh, because it was happening within Breda photo within the context of and that is I think quite important also to to know and to mm. emphasize again within the context of a thematics called the best of times the worst of times and I think also yeah. coming from that perspective and the, the approach of the curators trying to find out like we are living in a very chaotic time 
and uh, there are so many things happened. And Erik wanted to address cosmetic surgery and uh, in a form, in a particular form. And uh, I know for sure that many conversations have happened before it was actually realized. Mm -hmm. Also with women, uh, with men. Um, but the impact that it got, or that was the effect of it when it was captured by, in, by somebody making a picture, and it's going viral, and people are interpreting that image mm -hmm. instead of the work itself. Mm -hmm. Many of them haven't been there, haven't read the, in, the, 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 the contextualization of the work. And I think that is, uh, for Breda Photo, absolutely a learning point. Um, and I think also what um, Kuhn already said, like this is a new phenomena, like mm -hmm. or a new era area of um, public mm -hmm. um, who you don't know necessarily. They come from different angles and very yeah. unexpectedly. So, so, so that yeah. is so. Uh, yeah. So that's true. On the other hand, there is a skate community. I yes. mean, so maybe the skate community. I'm, I'm not sure if they were involved in in the proceedings, uh, but you you could say maybe a learning could be to if you do it in a public space. Well, maybe I know make sure. from the from uh, the director of Pier Five yeah. that uh, there um, there have been conversations with the female skate community. They have in the house. Yeah, sure. Um, and still, the the reaction when it got on viral was so much more hateful because mm. it stated that it was uh, um, that they they interpreted this uh, the artwork as setting out for hatred towards women, mm. and that was never the way it was presented to us by the artist. It was never the way the curators interpreted it. Yeah. I mean. Uh, somebody asked me in like in that week when uh, the the criticism happened, like, what do you? Uh, you're a woman, and then I and I and I'm still there, and I'm like, I would not have agreed to have an artwork that sets out towards hatred to women. I mean, that's just we are Breda photo is not there. No. To no. um, let me just, yeah, yeah, I sure, just yeah. want to finish this up. It's Breda Photo is not there to um, set out for any hatred, but it does facilitate uh, artists which have a point of view choose their form, and uh, of course we talk about it. Um, and uh, I think that is very important that we still do that we continue doing this yeah. also for the future. Yeah. But what I find interesting is that the challenge for a cultural institution or artists is that the contexts are changing. Right? So the social yeah. media is a new context where people are creating <coughs> their own context and you get a response which is very different from the context of the skate park where you can talk to people and you maybe you can even agree on the work. Yeah. But that's only one context. There's another yeah. context being put next to and that's something you have to relate to. Yeah. Well, that was also one thing that um, was, yeah, it's quite frustrating um, when, so there were the two forces, one of the female skate community, which was uh, more, um, the, the peer five team was more dealing with them um, and they got in contact with them and they spoke to them the moment that the criticism was received. We got a criticism also from the petition, the, the, the two women who started the petition. Yep. And I repeatedly asked them to have a conversation, and I'm really happy that Alina is now here, mm -hmm. um, and to have that conversation about also institutional responsibility. Um, but I always rejected to have that conversation within the the sphere of the internet mm -hmm. because I think being here physically, having like intonation, speech, mm -hmm. body language mm -hmm. uh, is so important, especially when it goes when an artwork raises so many people that get hurt, then of course we have a conversation about it, mm. but let's do it face-to-face -face yeah. on the table. Okay, yeah. 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 Because Erik, how, how is that for you, that, that there's this whole new context where work, your work is being interpreted uh, rightly or wrongly, apart from that, but it's a new context where you have to relate to now, no? No, huh? I mean, uh, I, the, 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 the thing is that when I make a work, mm -hmm. and again, uh, this, is not uh, rushed off, it's well thought of, mm -hmm. and it, uh, there was a year-long preparation for it. Um, then, of course, uh, 
Not, I mean, I, I totally agree. Or I to, um, for me, it's totally fine when people uh, don't like it. Or, uh, but then at least let's have a dialogue and a discussion. And, and, and that is a little bit frustrating in the end, that that is only happening tonight, mm -hmm. uh, long after the festival is finished. And, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I think that um, when we had that uh, really in the first week or in the first two weeks would have been much better because uh, then we could have also solved things and we could have, uh, I mean, and, and uh, let's be honest, uh, I mean, I am very much, uh, or, yeah, we, we constantly wanted to be in, uh, in discussion, mm. but um, yeah, uh, to really call out to remove a work and to uh, destroy it uh, really, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, uh, so that, yeah, that's something totally different, of course. Yeah. And, and that is also something that, uh, yeah, that's why we sit here tonight because um, that, that's what happened. And, and you know, and, and some people signed the petition. They said like, yeah, I, I, I don't like the work, but I sign it, but I don't want it to be removed or, uh, you know, like yeah. uh, okay. that is just, uh, so for me, uh, nothing. I mean, of course, one thing maybe is what we already discussed here tonight is mm -hmm. that, okay, when, a work like this is suddenly framed online and uh, put on there uh, because the person who has made that picture and sent it is probably also me who took that picture sure, and, yeah. and, and posted it. And uh, but uh, that is something maybe that uh, you can learn from to uh, yeah, like uh, also uh, uh, do that. You know, may, but again, uh, do that differently the next time. But again, uh, nobody of us, and, and I mean, we were in a, uh, with the skate park, with uh, the, the sponsors of the festival, with uh, the foundation that has uh, sponsored the piece. We were very enthusiastic about uh, that the work was realized and how it was there. Yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah. uh, we're about to introduce our last guest, but Nanya. What kind of difference would it have may, may, made if you would have been involved in the first week or the second week, or would it have made a, a difference for you? Uh, what, I, what I think that is the difference um, in what you guys are stating here is that all of these people who are involved in the process, they learn about the context before at that moment. But anyone who's visiting the skate park walks in, sees this. And yes, there is a context and an intention, and that might be totally different from what we see as the impact. But what happened afterwards is that um, what we see on the Instagram is what was presented. To find out the context and the intention, you had to look for it yourself. And then in the statements that came later, there was no reflection, as Alina said. Or like it, it didn't feel and look like reflection. And that kind of um, amplified the discussion even more, where people were like, yeah, but they don't even mean it. And if I would have been involved in the first, or first weeks, I think I wouldn't have agreed. But I don't know if that would have mattered because I'm just that one voice. Mm. And what happened now is that in this whole cancel culture, call out, call out culture phenomenon, mm -hmm. um, we, we had this, all these different people who bundled their power to say, no, we don't like this. And whether it should be removed or not, like personally, I think it would have been fine if it was in a museum but not in this context. But it's, it's never been about cancelling you or cancelling Breda Photo, mm. even though that there are some individuals maybe calling out for that. Mm. Okay, thanks. Can uh, I just add yeah. something? Because uh, sure. it's incorrect that on the spot there was no information to be found. There was actually an introduction text. That, yeah. that must have been like, made yeah, clear. I can understand that, uh, and, I, and I think that that is also something that we take forward towards the future, mm. that you... Um, Sometimes within the art field, or let me talk for Breda Photo uh, this year, um, we decided to not completely explain the work and have give it or, or interpret it already beforehand, before yeah. people see and the speak work. Speak it itself. by itself. And um, I don't want to say that we're going to do that, but I think we have to rethink the language we use, where and how we present and introduce the context of works, but also the work itself. And um, um, also that when you place a work outside of the museum walls or the institution walls, because Breda Photo doesn't have its own location in the city, we always go somewhere uh, or we are outdoors in the public space. Um, 
this m thing that happened to the work of Eric, of course, we take forward uh, in how we will proceed next year or in two years yeah. when we happen again. Okay. Well, yeah. Nanya, lastly, um, when it comes to uh, the cause that you're fighting for, uh, you also said, well, it also organized ourselves. In that sense, maybe there's, there's a silver lining to this all, that, that it's also made your movement stronger, or, or is that too, too optimistic? Um, I am not sure. Hmm. I think it is just one of the many things that happened, mm -hmm. and not necessarily that this thing strengthened the position of um, more inclusivity in skateboarding in general, mm -hmm. but I do think that the conversation has opened for the Netherlands, hmm. because um, you could say feminist or, or like more activism in skateboarding has been a thing um, maybe more in America or England. And now it has also kind of started in the Netherlands, not in a way that we want to fight everything, mm -hmm. but in a way that you need to open up the conversation about inclusivity or representation or how things are presented. And maybe that's the silver lining that the conversation has started. Okay. Thanks. Um, well, in terms of our next guest, you will stay here, but uh, uh, Nanya, you will go mm -hmm. uh, sit opposite to me because we'll have a screen with us because uh, it's all about uh, technology today. We have some uh, people here on the stage who are asking some questions, by the way, and I will come back on this also when it comes to uh, the guest who is arriving here online. Here he is, Tunde um, Adefioye. I think I, d I got it right, Tunde. Um, City Dramaturg at the KVS, the theater in, in Brussels. <coughs> Tunde, can we hear you? Are you there? I'm here, I'm here. Yes, formerly, formerly City Dramaturg, but now I'm a lecturer at uh, St. Lucas Antwerp uh, School of Art. Yeah, the, the School of uh, Art in Antwerp. Mm -hmm. great, to, uh, great to have you. You've been uh, joining us for the whole discussion already, I think, during the evening. But yeah. uh, we would like to, um, to, uh, to end with you, to also give us mm -hmm. a more of an international scope. Because mm -hmm. uh, what you've been hearing in the last, uh, what is it, uh, one hour and ten minutes, um, mm -hmm. is that something you completely familiarize yourself with also in Belgium and international scene, or is there uh, a different um, a discourse going on over there? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, um, one of the things that was, uh, uh, I mean, of course, cancel culture is something that, you know, people are talking about, you know, people are talking about in the U.S. and people are definitely talking, uh, people are talking about it here also. Um, but one of the things that was um, kind of striking that wasn't mentioned was the fact that, you know, um, uh, part of what um, in encouraged um, and I think rightfully so. Part of what encouraged rightful um, uh, cancel culture was the Me Too movement, of course, you know. Um, and it's something that I know very personally, you know. Um, and I think that we cannot miss that, you know. Um, um, I don't think that that was the point of um, uh, Tarana Burks, uh, the, the black woman who started, who, who initiated the Me Too uh, um, um, reality, um, it wasn't her point to kind of create this cancel culture, um, but it was a necessary part of kind of this questioning of power. You know, when people are questioning, um, when people are, you know, what is called canceling, it's as um, Alina said earlier, and I really um, kind of appreciate it, uh, so, so, uh, quite a bit of what Alina was saying, is that, you know, it, it, it was a lot about power. And, um, you know, of course, um, 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 uh, Linda also said it earlier, that it's a lot about power. Um, but in addition to the fact that it's about power, it's about redistribution of power. You know, um, and we need to think deeply about that. And w what does it mean when we think about redistribution of power in, re re uh, in regards to cancer culture? If you look at here, for example, one of the examples of kind of the Me Too crossing the cancer culture is, um, for example, uh, Jan Fabre. You know, this is, um, I think many of you know him either as a choreographer or a uh, um, uh, 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 artist, you know. Um, you know, there was a huge uproar, you know, um, but it's hard to kind of go to what Kuhn was saying as asking the question, was it successful? You cannot, you cannot define this sort of canceling or the, 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 the sort of um, different initiatives, the different letters, the different mobilization that mostly women, mostly feminists, took to make people informed, you know, like one of my friends, for example, who was kind of driving this sort of informing people about Young Fabra and how Young Fabra uses power within his 
uh, his uh, dance uh, company, it went all the way to uh, the Skirball in New York. You know, um, you know uh, the show finally, the show, uh, Young Fabulous show finally went on, you know, uh, no one listened, I'm sorry, not that no, no one listened to the letter, but the letter was not really uh, uh, used the way it should have been used by the director of the Skirball in New York. So the show went on, you know, um, but it does not mean that people are, it does not mean that it wasn't effective because the effect of it is that people are now informed about, not only about Young Fabra, but people are informed about how we need to change the culture that is, as, um, um, as has already been said many times, that is predominantly, predominantly dominated by a sort of white, Hate, uh, patriarchal kind of uh, framework. Yeah, because Tinde, this is interesting because you say uh, it, 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 we're in a stage of informing, you say. So it, it, would that be the stage we're still in? Because hey, you have different, if once you get informed, you can act on it uh, when it comes to changing the power structures or being more inclusive. Are we already in that stage getting, or is it, are we still in the informing the, the wrongness of institutions, of, in, of the, the, the lack of inclusion, et cetera? Oh, yeah, well, it's not static, right? You know, it's not static, you know, sure. uh, um, you know, uh, the, the, the term, I mean, people have said it a, a few times already, intersectionality. Intersectionality was a term that Kimberly Crenshaw came up with, you know, in, in the 80s. But, you know, uh, it's just now in the in the 2000s that more and more people are talking about intersectionality. So these realities are not static. Um, you know, people get informed and then we kind of, you know, as I guess, beings, we kind of fall into our old, old habits. You know, um, there was a moment now with the Black Lives Matter mo moment, you know, where people are talking about racial justice, people are talking about anti-racism, people are talking about being more inclusive, like the uh, institution in New York that uh, um, Alina uh, mentioned, mm -hmm. you know. But these moments, these realities are not static. You know, in New York, you know, uh, in 2018, you had a similar situation. I don't know if you've all heard about Dana Schultz. You know, um, Dana Schultz made this piece uh, based on um, Emmett Till, who was a, you know, um, who was a teenager that was, that, that, that was killed in the 50s, um, really brutally racist incident. And then Dana Schultz, this white um, uh, um, uh, artist decided I'm going to use, I'm going to appropriate the um, image of, uh, of uh, uh, Emmett Till. There was a lot of people that were not happy. There were a lot of people who protested by, uh, for example, P Parker Posey, who stood in front of Dana Schultz's piece during the, um, the, um, the biennial, the Whitney biennial in New York. You see, this was 2018. So what I'm just saying is that, you know, these things are not static. We, we're, we're having conversations, but things are also moving. You okay. know, um, and, and, also and, moving. And, and let's explore this moving because you say in the, in the end, it's about power structures, about this uh, white male dominated uh, patriarch. How do you, how do we change the, 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 the power structures in, for instance, cultural institutions? What, what kind of examples do you see where this is really making a difference and we're really changing the system? Yeah, well, um, once again, Alina kind of pointed to it. Uh, um, um, she said the, something about who's making, or Alina said something about who's making decisions. You know, and I was surprised that nothing was said about who has access until that point. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what we really, in addition to talk, talking about power, we need to talk about who has access. Who are the individuals who are making decisions on the, 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 the uh, different institutions? Who are on the board of directors? Not just, you know, it just, it, it doesn't have to be just to do with, you know, for example, in this case, Fleur, who's the director of the institution, but who are the people who are on the board of directors? Are there anyone who might be, I don't know, from uh, Ghana on the board of directors of, uh, of Breda Photos? You know, um, are there anyone, for example, who, um, who might be from uh, Suriname on the board of directors of a uh, t t uh, Tunnel, uh, what is it, the, the one in uh, Amsterdam, you know, um, th these are the questions that we really need to ask, you know, like, for example, if you look at the board of directors of the KVS, where I used to work, 
good luck trying to find somebody that is of color in that. There used to be one person, but she's no longer there. You mm -hmm. know, so we need to really kind of tackle it at that level. You know, like, I'm not really worried about who Eric Cassell asked about, you know, what they thought about this piece or that piece, you know, like, okay, whatever, you know, like, whatever. I'm really worried about, you know, like, who are the people who have access to making decisions? Because the people who have access to making decisions and dis determining who gets funding for what are the ones that are going to also d determine who comes in, what kind of artist comes in. And that's why I found, uh, it was a joke apparently, but I found uh, Kuhn's sort of uh, 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 mentioning of the black comedian, you know, kind of problematic, right? You know, cause you know, like it's not about that one black comedian, right? Like I said, it's really about, you know, how many, how many directors of color do we, run, do we have running, you know, uh, our cultural institutions, you know? How many uh, individuals of color, how many uh, trans individual, how many uh, uh, people living in, you know, um, um, social economic distress, how many of those individuals do we have on board of directors? These are the questions that we really need to ask more. Like, you know, like this, this, this discussion is of course important, but we should not be distracted from the main purpose of really talking about, you know, um, uh, uh, in being inclusive and really talk about redistribution of power hmm. within cultural institutions. Can I ask something? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Now you yeah, ask a question for you, Tunde. Well, not really a question, just oh, like a comment. Yeah. In addition. Yeah, um, sure. So a lot of talking in the beginning was also about media, like traditional media and social media, but the same goes for that as well, right? The traditional media, for example, um, are maybe giving out a platform for one of us as an individual to speak about what happened, but in the end, they're just there for reporting on the sensation. And hmm. I know that a striking example of what happened is um, I got this opinion piece in, the, in one of the newspapers, which was really cool. Um, but then later on, I saw this other article about art and safe spaces, and immediately it was kind of opposed. It was this thing about artistic freedom against a safe space. But that's not the thing. The, the thing is like we were finding a power, fighting the power structure of, of this, this uh, in, in skateboarding, the sexism in skateboarding and art as well. Um, and it wasn't about making this opposing thing. And all these media institutions, um, a lot of people in power are still not the people that care about this uh, fighting the injustice or the, the inequality. It's just, I see that like the journalist gives someone a platform, but then again, just goes on to make more sensation and yeah. like to make more polarization. And yeah. I think that uh, a lot can be win if you, in the traditional newspapers also have this, this, this board of directors, like to be diverse and to have this intersectional view on the world, then um, the polarization wouldn't happen through those media channels. Yeah, yeah but I, I think that Eric? in a lot of cases, uh, I mean, uh, where you were talking about, these were opinion pieces, eh? so mm -hmm. uh, everybody was, is, it's open for everybody. But and there that are also, also non-opinion pieces in which you said, angry women make angry petition towards mm -hmm. artwork, but that's again a framing of, of like, women who uh, were protesting something. And the same goes for, um, don't know who said it, but it's like the American cancel culture feminist movement, this, 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 blah, blah, blah. Even though it all started with a group chat with uh, me and other girls who skate. But at least there is a debate and there is a open... Uh... Yeah, but the debate is not fair. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like if, if the people who are platforming the debate aren't looking at it yeah, I think it's like an unfair debate. Well, I mean, there, can there's... We, can we, sorry, sorry, can, can, I, can I just interrupt? Yeah, sure, yeah. Look, will, yeah that, that's cool, whatever. Like I said, you know, going back to what Alina said, it's really important that, you know, like it's important to have this debate, you know, whatever. But let's not lose, you know, like they used to say back in the 60s, you know, keep the eyes on the prize. You know, if I ask all of you now, what is the prize that we're aiming for? You know, how, you know, that's a question. Like, you don't have to answer it now, but think about it. What yeah. is the prize that we're aiming for? Is the prize that we're aiming for to make it okay, just okay for Eric to show his work? I would say no, right? That's my personal opinion, you know? 
the prize for me is to make sure that when I look, for example, like I looked at the Breda photos, kind of, you know, the different people, like it was, it was, it was pretty dope, you know, like I saw, you know, some Chinese artists that have seen before who do really important work. You know, I saw this uh, Colombian, you know, Dutch artist who do, does, you know, some kind of dope work, you know, went to Lagos where, you know, my family is from and stuff. You know, but I, I did not see, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see anybody, you know, of what you would say, you know, African descent or Surinamese descent, you know, in, in the program. You mm -hmm. know, but that's, that's, you know, that's another point. Can I, can I okay, just, yeah, Fleur wants to respond to that. And then I have a question from the audience for you, Tunde, but maybe Fleur yeah, let, let, me finish, yeah. let me just finish, let me just finish real quick, Tunde, yeah. real quick. Yeah, just to say, please, let's, let, let's have this discussion but let's let's keep the eyes on the prize. The eyes on the prize is making sure that sitting next to Fleur, making decisions next two years are more individuals from marginalized communities. Okay, Fleur? Yeah, well, Tunde, I would really recommend you to uh, one, uh, have, the, have the coffee we agreed we would have, but also to have a f uh, do some more research on the website and look mm -hmm. into the long list of photographers that were selected for this edition, because uh, you have, for example, Soraya is a man who makes portraits of um, women who uh, became men. You have um, African um, photographers who uh, dive into the, uh, the question of, um, yeah, how will I say it? Like a trading of clothing and how that, like the whole circular of um, we throw away our clothes, they go to Africa, he brings them back, uh, makes them into um, uh, like very um, unique pieces. So there is, and it's 56 other artists besides Eric, and um, <laughs> there were. Yeah, like and I said, there were, I, I, um, I, I was probably the only white middle aged man on the whole program. You were, huh? indeed. And so, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and minority and that's also but now we're okay. exactly all attention okay. going towards yeah, you. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I regret here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was not Tune my intention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, Tune you know, like, I also um, have a question from the audience for you. Um, okay. Now, I was just going to say real yep. quick before you ask the question, Fleur, like, look, uh, you know, like, what I got is what I got. I didn't even know about this situation until I was contacted to join the, uh, the panel, right? You know, and I, I, like I said, I, you know, I tried my research. I did try to do my research, and I, what I saw on the website is what I saw on the website, you know. Um, but the point still stands, right? Uh, Fleur, you gave beautiful, beautiful examples, but the, Fleur, the, 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 the point still stands. Who are the people making the decisions? Okay, that's clear. Like, well, there, but there's, there, there's a question from the audience. Marike Vigo asks, is cancelling art and refusing to debate the artwork not copying patriarchal discourse? And I think that's a very interesting question for you, Tunde, because you also mentioned that that's something that you are fighting against. But are, are we fighting with the right means to change it? Isn't it also part of that same problem? Yeah, well, Marika, good question. Um, it makes me think about uh, uh, Audre Lorde, right? Audre Lorde talks about, you know, um, using the master's tools to try to build a new house, you know? Um, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like, of course we can think about um, or folks can think about new ways of um, uh, doing this, but you have to, you know, keep in mind that, you know, this is a method that is, you know, consider it this, right? Uh, I had a great conversation with uh, Yella about this, you know, like you think about the Zapatistas, right? You don't see the Zapatistas in, uh, in uh, Chiapas, you don't see their faces. They're using guerrilla tactics, as they call it. So you can see cancel culture as a sort of guerrilla tactic. You know, it's like, it might not be fair, it might be harsh sometimes, you know, whatever, but when people do not have the means to fight big institutions, you know, think about, you know, the, the Viet Cong in, in, in Vietnam back in the days, you know, when you don't have the means, you have to be creative to fight the power, right? Fight the power that beats, you know, that's, 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 that's public enemy. So, so that's, that's the way I see it is, is, is that, you know, like whatever, okay, you know, it might not be fair, 
But let's focus on why people might be doing this. Let's focus on the issue of power redistribution. Let's focus on the issue of access to decision making in terms of the funding and who gets what kind of money to be able to present their work at uh, a Breda photo. Okay, that's a very clear uh, ending for uh, tonight, Tunde, uh, because uh, uh, it's clear what the uh, what the purpose of this evening was about all the all the voices. So Tunde, thanks so much for joining us uh, online. Uh, I know you would have liked to be here, but uh, well, in Belgium, <laughs> f coming here is not a good option, uh, and vice versa. So uh, thanks for joining me, uh, Eric, uh, Fleur, Nanya. Thanks so much for uh, for being part of this evening on cancel culture. Uh, of course, can I, can I just finish with adding one thing? Um, because um, no. No. Because I just wanted to say that we do have uh, associate curators, one coming from Africa and one from uh, Dubai. Okay. And I think it's quite important. I just want to um, share that with you, with the audience, with the people at home, uh, to make sure that uh, the, the idea that Breda Photo and the curatorial team is a um, white male middle-aged group is just okay. incorrect. So that idea is wrong. <laughs> um, we'll close with that on this evening. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course, this discussion will go on. The fight will go on, as mentioned by Tunde. But hopefully, in the, some things will change. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's it. That's it, folks. <laughs> that was it. It's outlaw music. <laughs>